All right, good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? Good. How's everybody else? All right. I'm going to invite you to stand up, and I want you to sing along with us as if you mean it. All right? Here we go. One, two, three.
And this God is expressing through all creation in many, many ways. We come together today to experience and express the Christ spirit that dwells within each of us. And so it is. Amen. All right. Uh, now we're ready to share today's daily word reading. I invite you to take these words of spirit and divine alignment. Sunday, October 3, 2021. Faith. Through faith, I create the good I desire. Faith is my guiding light. It keeps me hopeful when I'm tempted to doubt and cheerful when I might otherwise feel gloomy. Faith tells me that even when the sky appears cloudy, the sun is still shining brightly above the clouds. Faith gives me a secure footing in the present as I plan for the future. Faith is the assurance that I am never alone, that everything I dream and do is divinely inspired. Every step I take in the direction of my aspirations is fueled by faith that they can come to pass. All of the wisdom, power, love, and strength of God are mine to express as only I can. Leaving timid, timidity and hesitancy behind, I use these divine attributes boldly and with confidence. Faith shows me the way forward. And from Hebrews 11.1, 1, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for the conviction of things not seen. And so it is. It's a new month. It means a new power, new hair color. <laughs> uh, so it is zeal. So our, our affirmation for this month is, I ignite my zeal by focusing on what brings me joy. Okay, that's powerful. Let's all... Read, we're going to read that together. I ignite my zeal by focusing on what brings me joy. Let's read it again. Okay, get the words in your mouth and in your heart and in your, in your mind. I ignite my zeal by focusing on what brings me joy. Okay, now we practiced it a couple of times. Now we get to actually affirm this. So let's affirm this together. I ignite my zeal by focusing what brings me joy. Awesome. Let us now prepare for our opening meditation and prayer. So before we get into all of, all of that, summer has passed. It's starting to get cooler a little bit. As, as autumn sets in, it's time to fan the flames of our zeal of our faith. Zeal is that inner passion that drives us. With the color orange, which represents joy and enthusiasm, you can't help but feel that fire. The energy center associated with zeal is at the back of your neck, right? Right there. If you had a ponytail, it's where your ponytail might be, okay? <laughs> it's right there. And uh, the zealot Simon is the appropriate disciple to represent this fiery power. Charles Fillmore once said, I believe this is when he was in his 90s, I fairly sizzle with zeal and enthusiasm and spring forth with a mighty faith to do the things that ought to be done by me. In this opening meditation this morning, we're going to activate our energy centers using tones. These tones are ooh, oh, ah, eh, or a, and e. We're going to work from the root, from down here, all the way up to the crown, and activating the energies of our 12 powers. We also often, often think of meditation as being maybe low energy, we need to bring our, the energy in our meditations up to a high energy, that high energy 
of love. So when we start, I would, I'm just going to have you close your eyes. Sit comfortably with your feet flat on the floor. I'm going to take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. Breathe in. And let that out. We will do that two more times. Breathe in. Holding. And release. And again, breathe through your nose. In. And release. If you place your focus down in the, the root, the root chakra area, this is where the energy center of life and release or renunciation dwell. And we're going to tone ooh three times. You don't need to listen to anybody else. Let spirit be your own guide. Ooh. Ooh. attention up to your sacral center, the lower part of your abdomen, at your navel and the small of your back. The energy centers of the power of order and of strength. attention up to the solar plexus, including your stomach and your intestines, your wisdom center. attention up to your heart chakra area and your throat chakra area. The power of love, the power of power, and at the base of the skull, the power of zeal.
bringing your focus up to your third eye chakra, the, the front of your forehead, the pineal gland, and the crown chakra at the top of your head, including the powers of faith, imagination, understanding, and will. He As we rest in a few moments of silence, focus in on your breathing, pulling energy from the earth up through your feet, up through your energy centers, all the way up through your crown and out into the universe as you breathe out. And then breathe in again from the universe or God energy in down through the energy centers back in and down into the earth and keep that channel of breathing going for just a few minutes in the silence. Divine Spirit, loving God, as we gather this morning in and as the one presence and the one power, we are grateful. We feel the divine presence flowing through us as us. May we carry this energy with us wherever we go. As we listen to the message in Sally's song and Louise's words of her talk, may we know they are divinely inspired. Let the words and the music speak to our hearts. When we end this short time together this morning, sweet spirit, may we sizzle with zeal and enthusiasm and spring forth with a mighty faith and do the things that are ours to do. And it is so. Amen. Amen. Ah. All right. Turn on the lights. <laughs> Let's stand up, wave at each other. Let's give each other a good hi. If you're watching on Facebook Live, type, type in, say hi. Especially if you're here for the first time. Let us know that you are here. All right. Everybody sit down. Ladies and gentlemen, Sally Applegate Roadman.
ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will open. All of your answers are in God's mind. Ask and it will be given. Don't worry with when, don't worry with how, for you will be shown every step to take. Hold on to your faith, all things work for good. You are sleeping the sleep, spirit longs to wake. it's so hard for me to believe but I must and I will Good morning. Good morning. Woo thank you, thank you, thank you for letting me give this talk today because it's something I am just learning. So the more often that I speak about it, the stronger it will be within me. So several years ago, maybe a couple decades at least, somebody contacted me who was a dean of admissions at a private for-profit college here in Indianapolis and asked if I would come in to their school and speak to him about coaching. And I had just recently become certified as a life coach and I thought, yippee, this will be great fun. <laughs> so I went in and we had a nice conversation. He told me what he was looking for. I felt, you know, I can do this. I can do this. And I went home. I agreed to do this. I think it was about a 90-minute presentation to his staff. And I put together a wonderful book. Uh, this was before you could do you know, all those wonderful, magical slides that they do today. You don't do anything in paper anymore, except me. Um, and I brought the books, and there were probably 20, 25 people. 
and it was a great time together. They had lots of questions. And afterwards, you know, I felt it was a pretty good success. And afterwards, I was speaking with uh, the Dean of Admissions and we talked about possibilities for the future and I said, well, next time I would charge. And he looked at me and he said, Louise, I would have paid you this time. I would have paid you this time. Did you hear the but? You did not ask. Well, I went out to my car and I, I got angry, justifiably, of course. <laughs> I don't do any anger unless it's justified. And then I felt really stupid. Then I felt embarrassed. Then I felt shame. Because A, I didn't know I could ask. B, at that time, I didn't know how to ask. So C, I wasn't ready to what? Receive. Receive. Exactly. Wow. The reason I bring that up is because of what's been happening in my life. Monday morning, last Monday morning, I woke up and told Spirit, please give me a crazy idea. Give me such a wild and crazy idea that it just rocks my world, that it changes my life. Thank you. And then I just kind of, you know, went about my day, but getting ready for that crazy idea. And I got it on Tuesday. Okay, I asked for it on Monday. Got it on Tuesday already. So here's the lead in. What if? What if our greater good, our greater happiness, greater love, greater health, greater well-being, greater understanding, greater anything, and then greater, greater, is only one asking away. Only one asking away. So this is what happened on Tuesday. I was reading a couple paragraphs in a little book by, I'll think of his name in a minute, or not. <laughs> and he had a quote there from the New Testament, from Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. I, I was stunned by what it said. So I looked it up, because he was quoting some, you know, old version, which was thee and thou and all of that. So I looked it up in my Jerusalem Bible, which my parents gave me when I was about 18 years old. I still have it. And this is what it said. Get ready. And if you... This is what I'd like you to do. I don't care where you are. If you're at home, uh, do this. If you're here in this building, do this. But if you catch something in what I'm about to say, this little quote, I'd like you to stand up. I'm not going to call on you. I just want you to feel the energy of it. And this is what it said. Glory be to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Those who stood up can now go home. <laughs> Teasing. Did you get that? 
Did you get that? Yeah. I'm going to say that again. Yeah. Glory be to God, whose power working in us, not working outside of us. Got it? <coughs> That's really important. God's power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Whoa, so infinite, what is that? Endless, boundless, limitless, inexhaustible, everlasting, perpetual, and omnipresent. You want some of that? Yeah, yeah me too. So this little quote from Ephesians 3.20 is lighting my life on fire. And I'll explain why. Okay, so imagine that you are hungry and you decide, you know what I'd really like is an apple. You know, just like a nice juicy apple. So, <coughs> so I'd like you to pretend that you found an apple and I'd like you to just put it in your left hand. That's it. And now just kind of close that hand around that apple. Okay, just hold it there. Now imagine, dear ones, that you look down at your feet and all of a sudden there's a bushel of apples. They're beautiful. I mean, you can smell the juice. You can, you know, maybe even you're drooling because they are so gorgeous. So not only do you have this one, hold it tighter, not only do you have this one, but you have a bushel. And then all of a sudden you look around and you realize that there's a truck coming, really beautiful, brand new truck, make it whatever you want. Mine is gold. And it's coming towards you. And in that truck are multiple bushels of apples. Whoa. I mean, you're never going to run out. And then imagine that you look around and suddenly you have been given the whole orchard. You've been given an orchard. And you're standing there, hold it tighter. <coughs> I don't want you to lose your apple, so go tight. There's a reason you're doing this. Pay attention to it, see how it feels. Hold it tight. Okay, this is what you wanted. And this is what the universe is offering. First a bushel, then a truck full, then an orchard. A couple of you are getting it and you're going, oh, okay. All right, now imagine, let's go take it a, a step further. Now imagine that you look at some of the trees in your orchard. By the way, you cannot see the end of your orchard. But you look at a couple of those trees and they don't have apples. They have gold coins. They have gold coins coins shining in the sunlight. Don't let go of your apple. Okay. Then, ah, look it. There comes a person through the orchard. There's another person coming to you through the orchard. There's another person coming to you through the orchard. And the first person says to you, I am infinite possibilities. Come and follow me. And the next one says, I am infinite opportunities, come and follow me. And the next one says, I am infinite good, come and follow me. And all of a sudden, all of these people start coming to you and you realize you are standing in the orchard of infinite good. But all you wanted was an apple. Now in order to have this orchard, you have to let go of this little apple. Are you willing? Yeah. yeah. Do you see what we do? We pray like this, don't we? We put what we want in our mind, I would like this. And the universe, God, 
divine mind says, oh, and I'll give you this, and I'll give you this, and I'll give you that. You want that? Step into the more. We made up the God of limitation. We made that up. There is no such thing. I've been praying to God of limitation that was made up in my mind by old beliefs of my childhood and youth. I don't want that God anymore. I like playing with God in that orchard of limitless possibilities. Okay, so then I woke up on Thursday and I thought, I wonder what the Course in Miracles says about ask. I'll just go look up that word. And in my concordance, there were just pages and pages of concordances where absolutely every word and every version of that word used in that book is cross-referenced, and you can look them up. Well, this was early morning. My eyes weren't quite focused yet, and so I didn't even get to ask. I opened it to the word asking. And I thought, I, I, I have to look at this. What does it say? It says, do not restrict your asking. I almost fell off my chair. I went, what? That can't be, what? First of all, you know, Ephesians 3.20 said, glory be to God whose power working in you, in you, can do infinitely more than you can ask and imagine. <coughs> Excuse me. Then I open A Course in Miracles, and it says, do not restrict your asking. Oh, just, you know, humor me. How many of you restrict your asking? Yeah, don't we? Then... This is what the Course in Miracles says, the whole thing. And it's found in the, the Song of Prayer. The aim of prayer or asking, prayer and asking are the same thing, okay? The aim of prayer is to release the present from its chains of past illusions. The idea that you could only have this one thing you're asking for is an illusion because every minute of every single day of your whole life the universe is giving you the more the universe is offering you the more the funniest thing happened this morning I'm on my way here I don't like coffee but boy I love my morning cup of coke coca-cola okay so I'm on the way here and I go ah oh, you know I can do without it just this once. I don't want to stop on the way and get that. So I get here, and I'm talking to some people, and all of a sudden, somebody is going out the door, and he says, anybody want coffee? And I said, no, but I'd take a Coke. And I got one. <laughs> Are you used to the universe taking care of you infinitely more than you can ask or imagine. Wow. So then the Course says, <coughs> you're going to love this. What prayer can offer so far exceeds all that you asked before that it is pitiful to be content with less. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be pitiful anymore. <laughs> right? It says, you have chosen a newborn chance each time you pray, each time you ask. And that's where it says, do not restrict your asking. It says, prayer or asking can bring you the peace of God. Wow. And if you are one of those people raised in a little bit of guilt, you don't have to raise your hand. We all know you. <laughs> yeah, because you're the people that keep saying, I'm sorry. 
<laughs> you know who you are, right? There she is giggling. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, if you start feeling a little bit of guilt because you're asking for a lot, just remember, God, uh, guilt is not godly. Just say that. Guilt is not godly. God didn't make up guilt, we did. We made it up to keep ourselves small and our version of safe. The Course of Miracles says guilt must be given up and not concealed. Wow. So then, my darlings, <clears throat> it gets better. I'm having this week of this crazy idea that says God through me, God power working through me, can do infinitely more than I can ever ask or imagine. And the Course says, <clears throat> I, I love it, I went from one thing to the next. Ask and it shall be given you because it has already been given. How can we feel in lack or deprivation when it's already been given? So Abraham Hicks is very good at explaining it's all been given, but our vibration hasn't caught up to it yet. Got it? Okay, I'm standing in an orchard, but my consciousness is in an apple. And if my consciousness is stuck in this one little thing, I cannot enjoy or take advantage of all this good. Does this make sense? Yes. Yeah. Why are we not asking for more all day long? Think about that. It's because for centuries, we have centuries of programming to overcome. And we can overcome it in a second, in a nanosecond, by stepping into our faith boldly. Stepping into our faith boldly. Ask and it shall be given because it has already been given. So get into the energy of it's already been given. Oh, that's right. It's, God's already taken care of me. If I want that, somebody will say, can I go get you that? Right? How sweet is this? Wow. Then the Course says, ask for light and learn that you are the light. Oh. oh, my goodness sakes, it just gets better. Then the Course says, <clears throat> ask and expect an answer. Ask and expect an answer. It says, ask with desire. With desire means ask and get into the feeling of it. Get into the feeling of having it. Get into the joy of having it. So I've been practicing. And whenever I think of something that I want, I, I'm saying to myself, and then what? Okay, so let's say <clears throat> I want a new computer. And then what? Well, then I want somebody to teach me how to use it. And then what? And then I want to have a great deal of fun with it. And then what? And then I want to do amazing things with it. And then what? Just keep going with, and then what? And what it does is it keeps expanding your mind to receive the more. Got it? Yeah. Well, Louise, I would have paid you the first time. But you didn't ask. Wow. Ask and expect an answer. Ask with desire. <clears throat> the Course also says you need not be sure that you request the only thing you want. But when you have received, you will be sure you have the treasure you have always sought. This life was meant to be fun. And we have made it one 
tragedy after another. You know, it's like we woke up, you know, in skin and said, okay, when does the melodrama start? <clears throat> I've got many good ideas. Yeah, this life was meant to be fun. This life was meant to be glorious. This life was meant to be spontaneous and joyful and magical, miraculous. You have to let it. You have to let it in. Wow. Does your asking, does your asking, does your praying make you flexible or rigid? Because asking, prayer, is meant to open us up to more, not restrict us. So, before I, you know, packed up to come here today with, instead of my notes, I brought my journal. And I brought my journal because I'm just learning this. Thank you for sharing with me so that we can learn together. Um, before I left, I thought, I'm going to ask one more time. One more time, what do we need to know about this asking thing? About this spiritual power of asking? So I opened on my e-reader a little book I'm going through by Becca Grabinski called Soul on Fire, Living a Truly Abundant and Aligned Life. And this is where it opened. Never be afraid to live your life boldly. We're very meek. We're way too meek in our life. We're way too meek, and I don't mean in a holy way. Never be afraid to live your life, and I'm going to say, and your faith boldly. Dream big. You know, I think we should have dream big groups, support groups, you know, and we share our dream and everybody goes, oh, add this, or what about that? And, and you just take notes so that everybody is there encouraging you to dream big. It said, ask for what you want. Right there, it said it. Ask for what you want. Believe you are worthy of having it. That's what I saw. Do you know what it really said? It really said, Ask for what you want. Believe you are worthy of having it all. <clears throat> Would you like that word all together? All. Woo! And again, all. And one more time, all. Woo! Then it said, release attachment. Release attachment to this one little thing that you asked for. Because the glorious good that wants to come to you around that is so much more than this. But we have to be open. We have to release our attachment to this one little thing and go, and then I want this, and then I want that, and, and sure. And then what? And then what? And finally it said, expect miracles to appear. Wow. All right. Let's do a very short meditation. This meditation is Lesson 165 in A Course in Miracles. The thought of God created you. It never left you, nor have you ever been apart from it an instant. It belongs to you, and by it you live. The thought of God is your source of life, holding you one with it, and everything is one with you because it left you not. The thought of God protects you, cares for you, 
make soft your resting place and smooth your way. Lighting your mind with happiness and love, eternity and everlasting life shine in your mind because the thought of God never left you and still abides with you. We open our eyes and together we affirm. <coughs> Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Whose power working in me. Whose power working in me. Can do infinitely more. Than I can ask or imagine. I make a commitment to this today. Amen. Yay. Thank you, Louise. Thank you, Sally. Am I alone in thinking that these messages get custom tailored to me? <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. And, and, and just, uh, just an example of, of what, how it worked in my life today, and I didn't even know I was asking. <laughs> um, I woke up this morning thinking, you know, since I had this miracle last week, um, that, and I'm recovering well. <laughs> and I woke up this morning thinking, who can I borrow a cane from? <laughs> Thank you, Marty. That's how God works. I love it, except I'm not going to let go of it right now, <laughs> if that's okay. <laughs> um, so now's the time to prepare for our love offering. Um, I invite you to go to our website, unityofindy.org, and donate online, or mail a check to Unity of Indianapolis at 907 North Delaware, uh, 46202. Um, and also we have, since you're here, those of you that are, there's a basket at the back of the sanctuary where you can drop your offering. And thank you for your thoughtfulness. Um, <clears throat> and now as we prepare for offering, I'd like to acknowledge any first timers. I see lots of familiar faces out here if you're, uh, but if you're here, oh, ah, ah, ah good. <laughs> I remember the first time ever I saw your face. It was great. <laughs> um, but, uh, and, and if you're watching online and this is your first time, we're excited that you're here. So type in your name and let us know you were here and we'll embrace you with enthusiasm. Um, and today is the first Sunday. Uh, so we've got a, a first Sunday brunch and um, um, uh, Universe cooperating again. I know what's out there is wonderful. <laughs> so uh, please stay and participate with that. And um, um, we celebrate all these birthdays and anniversaries this month and celebrate um, October with zeal. So thank you for being here. So now please take your offering in your hand or visualize your gift. I invite you to hold your offering in heart-centered intention as we affirm our blessing over our offering. Together, divine love working through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I give, all that I receive, and I am grateful. Thank you. All right. Um, does everybody know Ruth Sober? Ruth, let me raise your hand. Uh, Ruth, Ruth is our, um, uh, she's our uh, committee of, 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 is it just you, Ruth? Three. Three, there. And Delva. Okay. 
and time and Melvin. All right, awesome. Uh, they and so there are uh, our nominating committee. Uh, so it's it's time to start uh, looking for and finding those that would be interested in running for the board, uh, and that's coming up in March. So giving you plenty of time to think about it. Uh, but please talk to them, find out what it, what it is that uh, we're looking for, and look deep in, in your heart and ask your question, how can I serve? Okay? All right, I'm going to invite to stand up as we sing the peace song. Oh, yes, Debbie, sign up for the chili cook-off. It's at the end of the month on Halloween itself. So it's what, $5 to sign up, is that right? Okay. All right. Awesome. I'm so. Win this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Now it's time for the B song. Uh, I invite you to just visualize our world. Everyone standing hand in hand, heart to heart, soul to soul.